In this video, I'm going to explain a beautiful theorem about artificial neural networks. What the theorem says is that given any continuous function at all, no matter how complicated it might be, it's always possible to find an artificial neural network which can approximate that function as well as you would like. Now, to explain the proof of the theorem, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the basics of artificial neural networks. If you're not, you can find some links in the video description. Anyway, let me remind you of the basics of how an artificial neuron uh, works. So in particular, let's take a look at the output from such an artificial neuron, which we'll graph here. And the neuron has two parameters. Uh, one of those parameters, called the bias, is essentially the displacement of the output from the neuron. So if I decrease it, it moves off to the right. And if I increase it, it moves off to the left. And there's also this weight parameter, which is uh, how uh, we should weight uh, the input. And you can think of that as being a measure of how compressed this graph is. So in particular, if I increase the weight, it becomes more compressed. And if I decrease the weight, it becomes less compressed. Now, it's difficult a priori uh, to see how to use this to build up an arbitrary function. And the basic problem is caused by the fact that this is really a very complicated kind of an object. But we can simplify it a great deal by increasing the weight a lot. What that does is it causes this graph to be very compressed. And when it's compressed, uh, it actually uh, becomes a lot easier to think about. All we see is the extreme asymptotic behavior, which is much simpler. In particular, we can think of this as kind of an if-then statement. If the input is less than 0 0.3, output is 0. And if the input is greater than 0 0.3, then output a 1. OK, how can we use this kind of uh, behavior to approximate an arbitrary continuous function? The basic idea is as follows. What we're going to do is we're going to use this kind of function to build up what I'll call a tower function. So a tower function is just one that looks like this, kind of a bump. Um, and in particular, if we could stack up a whole lot of those tower functions of any height uh, whatsoever and arbitrary widths, then we'd be able to use it to approximate a function, a continuous function, as well as we would like. OK, how can we do that? Well, the basic idea is to add up two of these step functions to get a single uh, tower function. Uh, we're going to do that right now. Uh, so I'm going to get a second neuron, uh, which will also output a step function. Uh, we want the step function to be uh, displaced a little bit, though. Rather than at 0.3, let's make it at, say, uh, 0 0.4. So it's just a little bit further over. Uh, I also want to just resize this a little bit just to make things a little bit less squeezed. And what we're going to do, what we'd like in order to get such a tau function, is we'd like to basically add these two up. Actually, we'll, we'll take the difference uh, between the two of them. So to do that, I'm going to use uh, what's called a linear neuron, which I'll show here. Oh, oops, that actually didn't recognize quite right. Here's the linear neuron. Hopefully that will resolve correctly. And we'll add those in. And let's plot the output. And we see that we've actually added these two things up. Well, we didn't quite want it to be added. Um, what we want is to uh, subtract or take the difference. So let's modify that weight down to minus 0 0.1. And we see uh, that we get uh, 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 the tower function just as we wanted. We can change the height of the tower by changing the weight. Let's change it to a weight of 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6, so we get a height of 0 0.6 for the tower function. Uh, and if we were to change the biases here, we could also change the width uh, however we liked. OK, so that's how to construct a single tower function. What about if we want to stack up a whole lot of them? Well, it's uh, very simple. We can use uh, this network. We use the same basic construction over and over again, just adding two more intermediate neurons for each extra tower that we want. So let's see how that works. Uh, I'm going to just get rid of a few of these things just to make things a little bit easier to, to see what's going on. Let's move this neuron up here. Uh, this one down a little. And let's duplicate 
this so we get another piece of a tower function and uh, what we want is uh, to see let's make it a height let's say 0 0.7 so we'll ramp this up to 0 0.7 and we're going to add another one here and we want a compensating oh excuse me we want to move uh, it over we're going to have it out to being to 0.5 um, the other end of the tower function and we want to compensate with minus 0 0.7 here to make the tower just right. So we can see that by adding more and more hidden neurons uh, we can get any uh, arrangement of tower functions that we like. We can make them arbitrary heights and we can make them arbitrary widths and so we can use it to approximate any continuous function. Now uh, this is just the idea of the proof. There's several caveats. Uh, one thing we'd like to do is we'd like to replace uh, this linear neuron by an arbitrary neuron. Another thing we'd like to do is to extend the proof so that it applies uh, in many dimensions. Uh, those things and several other caveats uh, can be addressed or are addressed uh, in uh, a link uh, which you can find in the video description. But that's the basic idea of the proof of the universal approximation theorem.